hit that harder and that's going in. Yeah. So that tells us two things. Yeah. First of all, your start line was manageable. Mm -hmm. If you can hit that disc... Manageable, with, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, your, your, your face control was within a, within a degree of perfect. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Kerry Gray here today at Woburn Golf Club. Standing next to me is Jamie Donaldson. Jamie, thanks for coming along. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. Jamie is Europe's senior lead aim point instructor and one of the elite putting performance coaches out on tour. Today, we're going to be running through the trifecta of skills that you need to be working on to really upgrade the quality of your putting performance. You don't want to miss out on this one. So my first putt's missed by a fair amount. Yeah. It's low side, mm -hmm. right? It's long. Even if we look at uh, the average make rate of that for a recreational golfer, it's not great. It's not impressive. No. So how do we actually go about this process of reading it? Okay. So, so, so aim point relies on understanding the amount of tilt you're putting across. We already know the stimp of this green. That's not going to change while we're here. And this isn't a particularly uphill or downhill putt. Yeah. So all we need to do is to feel the slope in certain places and, and rate them mm -hmm. so if you were to come and just feel the slope here just mm -hmm. literally stand there and just tell me which is your lowest foot so your left foot's low which means it's a right to left breaking putt and now we'll come and measure it here I'll stand this way yep so it's okay. obviously that yep yeah. so this is a right to left breaking putt mm -hmm. now which of these two was the biggest slope uh i'll probably say the first one there okay the first one so if i come in here and I'm feeling a good two and a half percent, mm -hmm. which means we would play two and a half fingers. Yeah. Okay, so two and a half fingers in this case would actually be a thumb and a finger. Okay. And my arm bend, the amount I bend my arm pertains to the, the stimp. Yeah. And these are things that you'd learn in the class. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to attend a class to understand feeling slopes. But okay. what people can do to start with is come in and just literally, which is their lowest foot? Yeah. Now, when you're feeling which is the lowest foot, is it a big slope or a little slope? If you're feeling a lot of side tilt, you're going to have to aim quite wide. Correct. If you're feeling not much, you can aim nearer to the hole. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've, you know, obviously my rating would be two and a half. So if I'm now going to come in here, I would put a T peg here for this putt. Yeah. So, so that's where you'd need to aim this putt. Based on with where you're at, because I, d I do definitely do a variation of this. Yeah. I, uh, I do mine a lot more through, I'm very visual golfer yeah, yeah. myself, right? So when I'm walking along, I'm always looking at the part of the putt yeah. that the ball's rolling mm. along. So I'm narrowing my focus, right? Yeah. Visually, and you can see for me that high point, low point, but in aim point, it's really, really beneficial to feel it with your feet, right? Because that's not Well, to be, to be fair, your eyes are gonna be tricked. Mm. You know, exactly. you, you, visually, Things around the green, shadows, yeah. what you see other people's balls do, they all affect the eyes. Now, we know that the average read is half of what's really there. Yeah. So, so there is an alternative to yeah. seeing the curve. Yeah. Now, seeing the curve is a great strategy. Yeah. But what you'll find is, are you fairly comfortable with where that T peg is there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, well, you know, that would be called a linear aim. Mm -hmm. So this would be, we aim at the T peg, we hit the putt, gravity takes it towards the hole. Yeah. So linear aim would almost be where everyone sees every putt as a straight line to their aim point, yeah. and they just hit the putt. Yeah. Now what happens is, I see a lot of people set up to this and then hit the ball higher, yeah. and the ball finishes near the T peg. Yeah. Because they are what we call non-linear. Okay. So those are the guys that would benefit from seeing curves. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit like saying, if I said to you, hit a hit a fade around that tree mm -hmm. you would see a ball flight like a Correct. shot tracer Correct. you wouldn't say right my shoulders need to be 30 degrees left of that and the face needs to be yeah. one degree open yeah you would see a, a line and yeah. you'd kind of feel the path and the face control to make that curve yeah. non-linear would be that person okay and a, another example would be football's non-linear mm -hmm. like the ball comes in the player traps it positions it kicks it all in a second or two with an amount of curve to a player that's running yeah. with a fairly high delivery rate sure. in the professional game that's non-linear mm. you know it's like a decision made in a split second without too much focus on what shape is the boot what's the time that bloke's going to be there it's yeah. a reaction yeah. uh, put the ball on a penalty spot and it's now linear yeah. and only three guys step forward mm -hmm. they're, all, they're all amazing footballers in the professional game but it becomes a linear 
spot kick where they, they think about where their body is, they think about the angle they're coming in the ball, they think about the shape of the shoe, and they've got a target in mind. Mm -hmm. So, so non-linear would be the shot maker, yeah. or the art history. Yeah. Strict linear would be you aim at that point, hit your pup, let grab to do the work. Yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely the former. Well, let me show you something, because uh, I'm gonna come in here now, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna trace a line to my aim point, and I've got a line to the hole as well, which creates yeah. a V-shape. Yeah. And, and what we teach at Aimpoint is how to predict curve. So this ball will roll over that spot there yeah. in this putt. Yeah. So is, that, is there a general rule of thumb for, I suppose it depends on the severity of the slope, right? But yeah. how far inside Absolutely, yeah. that Absolutely. tee is? So that's the aim point. Yeah. Is this halfway between? Apex or Not is that the just apex. halfway? Well, it's after the apex. The apex would be about here. The about thing here. about the apex is the apex shifts around a huge amount. Yeah. And what we did was we used the aim point computer mm. to look for patterns. And what we found is there's a very high concentration of the ball rolling over this area. Yeah. Now this is about 66% of the journey between the ball and the hole. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens is at 66% of the journey between the ball and the hole, it's halfway between dead straight and the aim point. Yeah. On just about every putt, yeah. which is amazing, right? Yeah. There's one area where you can almost guarantee where the ball will be. Mm -hmm. So we used aim point to find out where this is. Now, if we come and stand back here, and we're now looking at this putt, if you, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this tee peg away now, okay? Mm -hmm. So if I move the pin out and take the tee peg away, how does that look to you? Well, see, the thing is, is that with this, my eyes are instantly drawn to that to try and yeah. really hit that, right? Mm. And yeah, I, I know I need to hit it a lot further yeah. down. Well, here's the thing, right? In my opinion, and from testing with players and working with players, we take the tee peg away because I don't care how well you aim at this stage at address. Yeah. I care about aim at impact. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the trick here, well, not the trick here, but the, the, this most likely is someone with no line on the ball. Yeah, sure. And what happens is we test your ability to start it high enough to hit that disc at a speed of the hole. Mm. All right, so this person probably won't use a line on the ball. And once they've got their aim point, they don't become obsessed with that spot near the hole. Yeah. And what I find is when I show people the correct curve, most of them say that that disc is too low. Yeah. So visually it looks low, which tells us that the curve seers yeah. are also expecting it to be higher. Yeah. So we've got another double jeopardy. Yeah. People that like to see curve think it breaks more than it does. Yeah. People that like to aim near the hole also think it breaks less than it does. Mm. So it's quite an exciting area that we've kind of developed here because people have two patterns and sometimes they're, they're practicing the completely wrong one. Yeah, sure. Totally wrong one. Sure. So now with you, mm -hmm. I would say that if you're a curve seer, we've used aim point to give us the drop point. Yep. And now it's a case of you rehearsing the, the stroke and the speed to roll through that. Mm -hmm. So I'd get you to stand about where you are now and kind of play that Tiger Woods 2000 and whatever it was. Yeah. The, trace, know, yeah. the tracer. The and, tracer. And, and then hit that putt. Yeah, okay. So we'll hit this putt and just, just kind of visualize the curve. You've got ball to disc to hole. Mm -hmm. And there's a thing called entry angle, which is how it enters the hole. Mm -hmm. But for now, start it right enough to roll through that disc at a speed of the hole. Give it a go and see what it does. There's a reason I'm not on tour, so let's see how we go. Well. That's good, just speed. Just speed, yeah. Felt so. Like it came off pretty good off the face. Yeah, hit it harder, it hits the disc. It was low side of the disc, mm -hmm. so you'd rather be right half of the disc, if anything. Yeah. Hit that harder and that's going in. Yeah. So that tells us two things. Yeah. First of all, your start line was manageable. Mm -hmm. If you can hit that disc- Manageable, would, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, your, your, your face control was within a, within a degree of perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, which is world class. Okay. On that putt. On that putt, yeah. Um, small sample size. Small sample size. <laughs> if the player can hit that disc without me telling you where to aim, yeah. it means that you've got this creative yeah. start line. Yeah. You know, that flair, if you like. Mm. Um, so people that like to see curves, we've got to put the curve in the right place. Yeah, okay, okay. So um, with that one there, 
if we think about what you were saying, mm. really, I'm looking to, to leave the ball about a foot past the cup. Yeah. That would have probably uh, just gone on the underside of the centre line. It still probably may have just missed I think you could have made that putt. So what you find is when a putt misses low, yeah. it misses by a lot. Yeah. Because the high miss, if you miss high, you could... <laughs> We've done the maths on this, but it's, it's like three times as much. Yeah. Is this because it's sort of rolling further down yeah. gravity? Because it's because yeah. the over reads always moving nearer the hole, yeah. and the under reads always moving away. Mm. You know, it, it could be as much as um, three times or four times the the, the miss value. Yeah. For example, if if you miss three inches high, yeah, the same miss low would be up to nine ten inches. Perfect. Through the middle of the disc. Perfect speed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It just, it based on the way that I see a putt, mm. and even though my variation of green reading at the moment is a combination of a mm. few different, mm. I would say experience. Yep. It's got a lot to do with it. Um, from what I know of aim point, I've done a class, right? Yep. And I can see how beneficial it is for mm -hmm. the students. Um, but that kind of just, it puts it all together where yeah. it just made it. Uh, very easy and gave me a bit of an, an idea and a system to follow, especially that last little bit there, mm. and just gave me a lot more confidence over the Well, that's it. And if you if you if you want to visualise curves, mm. you, you got to measure to where the curve will be, because otherwise it's just a guess. <laughs> you know, the thing about visualising curves, it's just it's a story. Yeah. No, it, it's you, you can't measure it. You can't. We couldn't measure it before. You couldn't tell someone how to change their curve value because it's a picture in their head. Mm. We can't adjust that. Mm. But now we can use aim point to give us drop point, yeah. and now you've just got to get that disc in the right place and you're good to go. Hey.